We've brought a number of physicists and mathematicians into veterans today because a number of us here are defense contractors and we work in the area of, of energy and aerospace and space. And we're aware that for at least 75 years, we've been teaching flat earth physics to people. Uh, one of the things we've recently attacked is the ideas of gravity. Uh, we're calling it uh, negative buoyancy, that uh, we are capable of electronically altering gravity fields. We have anti-gravity technology. We have available anti-gravity technology. We're capable of producing an automobile that will float. Uh, you know, right out of the Jetsons. We can do this. And we, we've published specifically how to do this on VT. And then you can go in and look. No, you can't. We've published it. I've got, I've got the math there. It's all there. Uh, that the U.S. government has projects like this, has had for some time. Many of these secret Area 51 projects, the, this technology was brought in from Germany at the end of World War II under Operation Paperclip. This technology was used, uh, and Betzer says this never happened, but uh, the moon landings used anti-gravity technology. Uh, we lacked sufficient power to get off the moon and to meet the command module without what we call the Apollo weight reduction. We have been publishing documents on this for some time. So for 75 years, we've been educating scientists in physical laws that just simply don't exist. And yet, we're doing experiments using energy weapons, other advanced systems, and we're continually getting results that operate outside the physical laws. And people are publishing on this, and nobody's ever told anybody that everything's changed. Energy's free. We can end gravity. I can go down to your, your city's generator system, whether it's coal-fired or nuclear or whatever, and I can simply take the inside of your generator and reduce its mass to where a kid with a crank could run the generator all day long because it wouldn't have any weight. And you wouldn't have to burn any coal anymore. You just get some kid from Pakistan for 20 bucks a month and uh, have him turn the crank all day. Uh, it, it turned like a bicycle wheel. I don't care if it weighs 100,000 pounds. It wouldn't weigh 100,000 pounds when we're done. Simply because I could alter the magnetic field around it and move the lines of gravity. What lines of gravity? We have the math there. You want to see how to do it, what is necessary, and how to build the equipment to do it. We've published all of it. Maybe you can just go ahead and read it. Whether you want to or not, you can go ahead and read it. And we have it from, frankly, initially came from Robert Oppenheimer, uh, Edward Keller, and Albert Einstein. And uh, was published and classified in 1954 and is still classified to this day and it would create let's say it would put an end to absolutely everything that uh, that we believe everything that uh, everything that keeps us using energy if nothing weighs anything you don't have to pay to move it uh, if energy is free then running a tractor doesn't cost anything. Pumping water out of the ground doesn't cost anything. Purifying seawater doesn't cost anything. You see where this is going? Moving cars up and down the freeway no, it's, doesn't it's go. It's going to be a complete reorganization of the global uh, financial and economic and, system. And all of the jobs necessary for creating all of that aren't needed, but the expenses for paying for it aren't needed as well. So in a cascading, uh, let's say, 80% of the human endeavors are tied toward energy slavery. And without this, and of course the Malthusian belief is that if we have free energy, if we have anti-gravity, two technologies that are, are and have been deliverable since 1945, free energy and anti-gravity, are there, and we've published the science on them, hard science that the Malthusians believed that we would all, just like little bunnies, have thousands and thousands of ignorant little children that would run around until you couldn't stand anywhere, till there wouldn't be anywhere for the rich people to have their beachfront homes, or uh, they'd all have to live in compounds like, you know, like a bad zombie movie. But this is, this is the idea of the people running this planet. Uh, if, and then that's another story, uh, we can bring Duncan on, 
are people running the planet, and I can't necessarily prove that. But uh, we're living we're living in a world that is very much like a Matrix movie. Energy production based on hydrocarbons is a, a junk science, absolutely unnecessary. We do not need solar heat. As far as is you know human disease goes now. There are groups, and this is what Michael and I have seen, we're going up another step here. There are groups that believe they're guiding the future of humanity that are more, way more powerful than governments, that we have some contact with individuals within these groups. Michael, tell the people what you want to be able to tell them about what we're not telling them. <laughs> well, we're, we're, you know, um, you and I, uh, had a discussion some months ago about doing an outreach uh, to our our friends from out of town, and you know what technologies can we get, what assistance can we get uh, in order to help clean things up around here, if you will. It's uh it's not just this country; it's the, the entire planet, and we're 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 trying to make inroads, make contacts, make uh, have discussions with. People who can introduce us to, and, and, or, and, lo, or and lo and behold, the phone rang. <laughs> and lo and behold, the phone rang. And uh, you know, I've I've been to several meetings, if you will, where this is happening, and uh, we've come up with some very interesting people and some some very interesting opportunities to advance technology, and uh, we're following up on it. So that's that's what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, and w- within this. Uh, the friends from out of town here, and, we're, and now we're talking in the area. We've put on this is the we're going to have a tinfoil hat minute, minute here now. Let's let's say you were watching uh, one of the three, and I, I love all of them by the way, uh, Men in Black movies, and they were all totally true. You know, well, what do you mean? Yeah, totally true. And uh, that we were in contact with one or more, you know, reptilian uh, reptilian. Mind sucking shape shifters, you know, we're uh, we're at the door right now selling Girl Scout cookies. The issue being that when dealing with these issues, which may or may not exist, and this is a very ethereal area, okay, a very very confusing, literally for me, and, and it, I guess it's supposed to be. I, I, I'm dealing in an extreme area of uncertainty here, and I have some history with with this. I've I've worked on government space related research projects uh, as a, as what you would call a reader analyst advisor and uh, been exposed to things that are let's say outside normal physics but my god I'm running into people that go so much further than me anyway all the time it doesn't matter but you can either claim that evil alien mind sucking shape shifting uh, reptiles or the Rothschild family or the black nobility or whoever they are, if you don't see who they are, it doesn't matter who you, if they're aliens or not, that run everything, and you don't even know their names, if they want to kill off everybody on Earth because some agenda they've got tied to something they believe that we don't even know about or, or have a word to say about, and yet they're capable of, if they wanted, creating Ebola and arming ISIS and manipulating wars or poisoning the ocean or you know, crashing... Crashing an asteroid the size of Cleveland into your house, it doesn't matter who they are. Now, do things like this exist? I can tell you from an analytical standpoint that if you look at the world situation and you uh, look for some kind of pattern, why are people doing what they're doing? Why is the U.S. the way it is? Why do we owe this money for what? Why are we using and doing these? There is no sense to any of this whatsoever. None. Take the clock back to 1970. African nations have been free. Ghana, 57. They've been free for a decade for the most part. We look at the technology the you know the U.S. had. I'm dri- I'm I'm just back from Vietnam driving. Uh, uh, I've got a Plymouth Roadrunner uh, 650 Yamaha and a uh, a 911 Porsche. And uh, Porsche do 165 miles an hour, averaged 38 miles to the gallon. Beautiful running little car, 2,300 pounds. Plymouth Roadrunner cost 2,700 dollars, 365 horsepower. 16 miles per gallon, 
could mail you into the seat, started every day. The motorcycle, still running. That many years ago. And look where we are today. We've created the iPhone 6. I now only have a, I have a Samsung Note 3. I should get a Samsung Note 4. I've got a motorcycle that needs an oxygen sensor. Well, help me find that. I've got a BMW with a couple turbochargers on it that runs pretty much like my 69 Plymouth Roadrunner did. Almost exactly. Uh, you can't tell them apart, basically, other than... Well, well that, that, that's the thing, Gordon. You know, we, we've been given, you know, technology for toys, but nothing that's been meaningful in energy nothing generation. Nothing that's meaningful at all. And so, you know, we, we've been, you know, caught in a technological cul-de-sac. We have the illusion of progress, so the illusion of movement. But when it comes down to the things that matter... Uh, that that's not been released. That's not been uh, you know, freed up for us. And that's something that, that's what we're working on. That that's that's really one of the natures of our uh, uh, of one of our projects and our assignments. And you know, we're trying to advance this every way we know how. When, it, when we're talking about anti gravity, we have designs from 1945 for equipment involving anti gravity, and it's large and heavy. Were anti gravity technology uh, to have been allowed to develop as it should have? using manipulation of magnetic fields because we have found that inside the atom there is no a larger and smaller attractive force that atoms are held together entirely electromagnetically by the uh, electrons alone and that protons are, are diamagnetic and that's we'll get somebody in but it basically means that things things don't work and exist like you think that well, let's describe, we'll describe a battery for you. What if you had a battery in your car that would, instead of tons of fuel cells or whatever, a battery the size of your car battery made out of lead with a little bit of depleted uranium in it and sulfuric acid would run your car for a hundred years with electric motors. Call it a battery. You never have to charge it. You never have to do anything to it. You do have to have an electronic monitoring system to make sure it doesn't go critical because it's a nuclear reactor. Mm -hmm. But it's not hard to manage. It's not, it, and the radiation can be controlled and it will make your car go awfully fast and it will never run down, never cost anything, and will cost $200 to build. That's all. And we could have, let's talk about gravity and that's if your car weighs 5,000 pounds. By today, we could have made a, uh, an available circuit using coatings within your car and a circuit that would run off a 9-volt battery for as long as the battery can work. Uh, that would make your car weightless. So if you ran into a bridge abutment, you'd bounce around like a ping pong ball. You wouldn't be injured. And that the, the well, battery well, to move your 5,000... How do you well, well, there, there, there's a up? difference. There's a difference between weight and mass. You, your your car would would still have mass to it. So I I, I might argue with that about the bridge uh, there, abutment. But, with a, so your your car your car a a gravity weight reduction system would eliminate the mass of your vehicle. You would lose the mass. The mass is dependent on gravitational lines. When you alter gravitational lines, and this is the you know Einstein J D of curved space. Once you've altered the gravitational lines, you've eliminated mass. The relationships now, this is the new physics here. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying we've had been flat Earth for a long time. That equating mass with gravity falls apart based on the 1954 Einsteinian theory of negative buoyancy. And this is one that we ended up proving uh, uh, again working on uh, energy weapons and uh, we've got the scientific data on, on one of the experiments we did where we had a magnet fail and we found that with a failed magnet that was supposed to, uh, to control a proton flow that it was never needed. We never needed the magnets at all because we had no mass. But that's, that's another story. We need physicists to deal with that and even I'm barely one of those anymore. And I'm going to night school learning nuclear physics, heaven forbid. Well, Gordon, we're out of time today. I want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, everyone, it's been an interesting day. Uh, the message I have for the day, the takeaway, is that there is light at the end of the tunnel, folks. We might actually bring the 9-11 perpetrators to justice. 
and uh, we might do a whole lot more than that. So uh, the tech and the technology things we're talking about are absolutely. Important.